Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about drafting. I'm going to give you guys five factors to consider in order to pick the best champ in a draft. So without further ado, let's jump into it. This, this video can be dangerous, this topic. We can easily go down the rabbit hole and overcomplicate your journey and your champ pool. So I want to preface this video with a warning that picking the right champ is one thing, but understanding your champ's identity, their role in the game, having mastery on the champion uh, is a completely different story. So you can even one or two trick to challenger. You don't need to have a giant champ pool with lots of different classes. However, having a few different classes under your belt can really help out your team and to round out comps in a lot of situations. However, I don't have access to all of your individual champ pools, so this video is going to cover common supports from the Engager and the Enchanter classes to cater to most people. All right, the first factor is lane matchup. You want lane to not get in the way of your identity, mainly pre-level 6. If you're an engager, you typically want kill threat to be able to actually engage on the enemy. Each engager is slightly different, but most common champs that could get in the way of having that kill threat are Israel, Sivir, Renata, Janna, Braum, Morg. Typically mobility spells or spells that block other spells or prevent CC. So if you are faced with these champs and you want to pick a, an engaged champ, you can pick Leona into Ezreal, as you can follow his E, you can pick Ali into Sivir, she can't block your combo, or you can even pick an engager who is more comfortable in scaling towards the mid to late, such as Rakan, Amumu, Rel. Otherwise, if you are faced with those annoying champs that I listed, maybe picking an engager isn't the best idea. I will say that engagers love versing a mobile ADC, so they always have an engaged target. Let's move on to enchanters. Enchanters, they want to scale into the mid to late. So their um, early laning, their pre-6, is much harder to disrupt. But I will mention champs like Blitz, Pike, Nort, or kill lanes might make this tricky in just surviving a lane and getting to the team fighting stage of the game. So kill lanes, these are engages plus all-in ADCs, like Samira, Kaisa, Trists, Callistas. So if you're faced with versing these champs, and you want to play an enchanter, make sure you pick one with sufficient disengage. And for this, Renata and Janna are going to be the best options. The second factor is what your team needs. In solo queue, you typically want a well-rounded comp. You don't want to be one-dimensional. You don't want all carries. You don't want all short range. You don't want all supportive or facilitating champs. The most important role to consider for this factor is jungle. Mid and ADC are generally quite stable in what they provide. Squishy damage dealers. Top can be versatile but it is also the most isolated throughout the game. Jungle is very versatile and you want to be constantly looking for opportunities to coordinate with them in game. So synergizing with their pick is important. If your jungler is a carry, if they're squishy and they build damage items, you know, like Kindred, Eve, Nidalee, Elise, Kha'Zix, Rengar, the list goes on, then you want to provide these champs with setup so that they can actually deal their damage. Engagers and playmakers will fill this role the best. If your jungler is a tank, so if they're like Sedge, Zac, Udyr, Volibear, Skarner, any champ that is building tank, then they will function the best with enchanters for providing that front-to-back identity alongside them and extending fights. If your jungler is a fighter or a bruiser, such as Zin, uh, Wukong, or Jarvan, then you have the most freedom with your pick. So let's move away from the jungle picks quickly. If your ADC is all-in, so if they're the Samira's, Trist, Kaiser, Callista, then you want to place a higher emphasis on picking an engager. And if your ADC is a hyper carry, such as, you know, Twitch, Cog, Vayne, Jinx, Aphelios, you want to place a higher emphasis on Enchanter. Obviously, you can take into account your top and your mid pick, but this is going to go a long way in terms of just simplifying the whole draft process. Pay the most attention to your jungle and your ADC pick. All right, so the third factor to think about is what does well into the enemy comp. Every support has something in their kit that excels versus specific champions. That's why League is such a great game. Every champion is unique and can provide something that no one else can. So whether this is Janna cancelling interruptible engages like Zack's jump or Rel's jump, or Leona or Bard versing immobile carries that they can ult easily, or Braum blocking important projectiles and making short range champs lives really hard, you know, Rakan being slippery and great at counter-engaging versus assassins and engage comps. Alistair having point-and-click uh, combo that can't be dodged through dashes. 
Soraka, silencing champs that need to get off important spells in close range, you know, like Fizz's E, Cass's uh, Vlad's W, also Soraka's Alt vs. Pike and Karthus, um, Nami vs. champs where you can reliably land bubble against, as you know where their end location is, such as TF's ults, Zed's ults, Galio's ult, etc. I could go on and on. The main question you need to ask yourself is, are any of their champs hard countered by a support? And particularly a support in your champ pool. What common theme does the enemy team have, if any? And which support that you play excels versus that theme? If they have a lot of engage, maybe this could be Janna. If they're very short range, maybe this could be Renata or Braum. If they're immobile and like to poke, then maybe you want to look for Bard or Leona, etc. Moving on to the fourth factor, what is your win con? This is a complex factor, but a good starting point to understand your team's win con is to assess solo lanes. Let's start with top lane. The reason that assessing top lane is so important for this factor is because your jungler has to choose either top or bot to path towards as they are opposite sides of the map. So does your top laner want to group and team fight or do they want to split push? Your team needs a win con. So what this means in draft is that you don't want to pick a support that needs resources and to be played towards when you already have a volatile split pushing carry top, such as, you know, Camille, Fioras, Jaxes, etc. Ideally, this would mean staying away from picking champs who need to win lane, who need to be passed towards. You know, Karma, Leona, Nautilus, they all need to generate pressure through bot. Or if you have a kill lane, then you guys need to kill and need to be played towards as well. If you have a tank top like Orn or Cho'Gath or Scion, or a team fighter top like Kennen or Gragas, then you want to allow your bot to be played through instead. So this would mean playing a higher emphasis on the good lane matchup factor that we talked about. This is all just to make the jungler's life easy and therefore the game easy. Moving on to mid. Here we can consider if they are a carry or if they're a facilitator. So champs like Galio, TF, Seraphine, even Lissandra, who want to set up their team for success, then there is more incentive for your lane to be a source of pressure. Typically what you'll see in solo queue is there is going to be a lot of volatility around mid with assassins and short range champs going head to head and that's where you'd want to pick a champ that can roam easily, you know, engages, playmakers, things like that. So this is quite a tricky factor and the more that you think critically about draft, the more you get a feel for what the win con should be and how best to facilitate this win con through your pick. Moving on to the last factor, pick order. So all of the above points, you know, they're all well and good, but they are assuming that you are late in pick order and you can round out comps and you can counter enemy champs. What if you're first pick or need to blind pick, right? There are a couple of things that we can still do here. If our teammates are hovering champs, we can either ask to pick for them and then we can, you know, get more information in the draft and counter and round out comps. Or we can even round out our comps through what they're hovering. So if you're early pick, and you don't have any information from team hovers, and no one wants you to pick for them, then the best blind picks become those who are effective in the mid to late game. So that way, if you get countered in lane, you can still be useful. So champ's identity who revolves around the early lane, like we just mentioned, the Karma, Leona, Nort, they're risky to blind pick. Otherwise, all other enchanters and playmakers, and then the engagers that scale the best, like Rakan, Amumu, Rel for the team fights, those are solid blind picks on paper. So please keep in mind that this is purely on paper, purely theoretical, and you need to factor in your enjoyment and your level of mastery and understanding on the champs to decide who you actually end up picking. This diagram over here should help give you an idea of what your champ pool should look like, how you get to choose your champ, uh, your champs for your champ pool. So once you do have your champ pool, then this video might help you to select from them. And what you wanna do is find the champ that best fits all of these factors. Okay, so now we're going to go over some drafting examples that'll hopefully resemble some of your solo queue games. In this game, we are red side and we're just about to pick fourth on red. We see Lee Sin, Samira, and Nautilus. Their identity is quite clear. They want to go in and they want to kill. So initially I'm looking to pick, you know, some, some peeling tools, maybe an enchanter, maybe even Braum. So my options are pretty much Janna and Braum here. I could also pick Renata, but Renata paired with Ezreal isn't the greatest so let's weigh up the Janna and Braum decision here. Janna can cancel Lee Sin, can scale up with Ezreal and should be able to survive the Samira Nautilus lane well enough. Janna also provides more teamfight front to back paired with an Orn because Orn provides that front line already and then having an enchanter to extend fights off of 
that's going to look really good for us. Braum, on the other hand, will be harder to kill in lane and will also be able to prevent what we see here in the Lee and Samira Nautilus from doing what they want to do in team fights. But I do prefer the Janna option here. What Janna also does is peel better for the Xerath and the Israel, who want to be safe in the back line just throwing out spells, and the ult can be really handy for that. Okay, so the next game here, we have third pick on blue side, and our fourth pick is hovering in Ash. So we have a Kale. We have a Viego. I feel a little bit inclined to provide some engage for my Viego because he wants to fight. He wants to get those resets started. And he already has a Kale, which has no threat whatsoever. So he's going to struggle on that front. However, I could also look to pick an Enchanter that can disengage Fiddle and potentially pair up with Ash to just dominate Israel in the 2v2. So I could pick Janna to ult Fiddle away. And with a Janna paired with Ash into the Israel, we're pretty much guaranteed to win the early lane as well. However, I do feel that stronger inclination to go towards an Engager for my Viego. So if I do want to go an Engager, my options are a Team Fighter Engager so that the slipperiness of Ezreal doesn't directly disrupt my identity, um, or an Engager that counters Ezreal and can follow his dash. So those options are pretty much Leona or the Scaling Engagers, uh, Rakan, Amumu, Rel. Okay, next game here, we are fourth pick on blue side. We have triple melee kind of assassins topside. We have the Akali, the Kane, and the Yasuo. So they would love some engage to get these fights started. And I think that Rakan would be a fantastic pick here because they're quite mobile. They want to get in people's faces and then I can be, you know, a primary or a secondary engage. However, the tricky part about Rakan is that this lane would be practically unplayable. Senna and Cho'Gath, they love if you engage into them and then they can be really annoying and sustain and all of those things. So I actually decided to go with an Enchanter. I decided on Renata because Renata can deal with this lane pretty well. Her passive is going to deal with Cho'Gath well, and she's also the most proactive Enchanter in terms of setting fights up and facilitating hard engages. However, I think Rakan is the best pick here to just round out the comp. I will also mention that Playmakers, you know, the Bard and the Pike in terms of just roaming would also be a great option here because Senna lanes they need to stay in lane and that gives you just easy uh, ample opportunity to roam away create numbers advantages and find kills with the aggressive top side all right so for this draft we're third pick on red and our fifth pick is hovering yasuo and i know he's a yasuo one trick so let's start to unpack this they have fiora we have an anivia this is a Nivia top and they have um, an israel sona so i'm already feeling really pressured to provide engage because we have a viego who wants to fight and we have an anivia top so if I don't pick an engage, our comp is going to feel really one-dimensional. There's even more incentive to pick engage so that I can set up my Yasuo. And so these options are pretty much going to be Rakan or Rel. The problem with Rakan is that we would give the Ezreal and Sona a free lane, which is scary. However, we can link up with our mid and jungle and potentially create win cons through that. It's hard to find a champ that beats Ezreal in lane and also can find knockups for Yasuo. The other option I will mention here is Nautilus post 6, his job will be able to deal with Ezreal and provide some opportunities. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope that you can take something from this video without being overwhelmed. And remember, develop your champ pool and use these factors to choose from that existing pool. So for access to almost daily coaching sessions, you can follow my Patreon link down below in the description. Uh, to join up to the honor roll please consider liking and subscribing but only if you enjoyed this video and thanks again for watching goodbye